second presenter. The second presenter, he's a, a, a professor in our department uh, uh, of general linguistics. Um, he's uh, Lukas Samechnik, uh, Samechnik. Um, and uh, well, he, he has been working a lot with uh, philosophy of science and linguistics. And indeed, uh, he has a, an upcoming book, which is called uh, Investigations and uh, Explanations in Linguistics, right? Investigations. Investigations of Explanatory Strategies in Linguistics. Thank you. Um, so it will be published uh, soon, uh, but today he will talk to us about uh, the works of Jan Korzienski and uh, his talk is called uh, Dynamical Systems in the Work of Jan Korzienski. So, Lukas. <laughs> Thank you, Israel. I need to find the presentation somewhere. So thank you, thank you once more for for this nice nice event. I I'm happy that I can be here. It's just nice nice opportunity, and uh, uh, I I would like to uh, make a, a, a very very small window into the work of uh, Professor Kozenski. And uh, first of all, uh, I think that Professor Kozenski's work uh, deserves. Uh, and and wide uh, reception not only in our our Czech uh, Czech spaces but also uh, more broadly and uh, it's a shame a little bit that we do not have his works in in English especially we have one of his big work in English it's, it's his uh, construction of grammar uh, from the semantic basis uh unfortunately still not authorized uh authorized translation and uh so i would like to uh, make some as i said some some small window of knowledge about his his papers here and uh the problem of course is that they are all in uh, in czech so i i made an and a quick uh deeper translation from from czech to english and but I think, fortunately, that uh, these translations are not wrong, and it's quite interesting because uh, writing of um, Jan Kozenski is is very uh, complicated. His sentences are very long, and uh, the structure of argumentation is is really really deep, and and uh, also the terminology. So uh, I'm happy that the deeper is so good as it is, and. Uh, I would like to start with this um, this quotation from from Italo Calvino, from his American lectures, especially from the third lecture, Exactitude. And I will read it, and you can read it. And uh, I I think it, it's it's a nice part of his writing. This taste for geometrical composition, of which we could trace a history in world literature starting with Malarme, is based on the contrast of order and disorder fundamental to contemporary science. The universe disintegrates into a cloud of heat. It falls inevitably into vortex of entropy. But within this ever irreversible process, there may be areas of order, portions of the existent that tend toward a form, privileged points in which we seem to discern and design or perspective. A work of literature it's one of these minimal portions in which the existent crystallizes into a form, acquires a meaning, not fixed, not definite, not hardened into a mineral immobility, but alive as an organism. So especially this combination of science and literature, something very special for, uh, for uh, Calvino, I, I, I feel also in, in, uh, in some writings of Professor Kozensky. Uh, and uh, this is the reason why I choose this, this passage from Calvi Calvino and uh, not only 
because of 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 these uh, similar terms from dynamical systems and from physics which uh, for Calvino was very inspiring uh, as I said I would I, I I will be happy when we we can say that some of texts of Professor Kozensky are widely known and uh, my motivation starts in uh, with this one text uh, which uh, in in Czech is, uh, is uh, title in Czech is Chaos Řeči a Řád Jazyka as a question or chaos of speech and the order of language. And this was the first text which I uh, found uh, written by Professor Kozensky already maybe 22 years ago when I started my study and I was interested in philosophy of science and, and dynamical systems. And uh, uh, in this collected work, uh, collected by Professor Nosek, uh, was, uh, was this paper written by Professor Kozensky. And later, maybe two years uh, later, uh, thanks to my uh, colleague and, uh, and uh, yes, my colleague Don Faltinek, I realized that, uh, that Professor Kozensky is a professor at the Department of Bohemistics. So, uh, after this uh, realization, I had the um, opportunity to listen to his lectures and be in some contact with him. And uh, uh, the last contact was when our contact related to some, some work or some in investigation. It was in uh, maybe 2015 or 2016 when uh, we finished the work uh, on his last collected monography transformations of thinking about speech at the turn of the millennium. And uh, this was uh, again the opportunity for me to read another text of Professor Kozensky related to dynamical systems and his uh, conceptual borrowing from sciences. So for motivation. And now why and Kozensky and dynamical systems? Uh, because I'm not a linguist, I, I cannot uh, go deep into, into his inspirations concerning grammars. But, but the most important thing was that Professor Kozensky thought that uh, he can use concept, uh, these dynamical systems, dynamical systems theory, and the conceptual borrowing from, from physics, chemistry, broad, uh, to uh, use it as a, as a basis for his construction of procedure and emergent grammars. And uh, I, I know only the shape of it. I do not know the, the core of it. So I think it would be great uh, when someone of you could investigate more in, in deep because it's nothing uh, like a curiosity about one professor in Czech, uh, Czech uh, universities, but uh, it was something common for, for uh, plenty of, of scholars uh, and researchers around the world to try to use these concepts. For example, uh, synergetic linguistics or system theoretic linguistics is another case uh, in the similar time uh, in Germany, in Trier, in Bochum. And uh, uh, in this paper, uh, from description to explanation in procedural speech modeling, Professor Kozensky exactly says that, or asks the question, where to look <clears throat> for the modeling means of the procedure conception of speech? It's a fundamental yet open question. At this point, we can only say that the noetic space in which this search will take place is general systems theory from its holistic and Bertalanffian foundations through general information theory to contemporary theories of complexity science, including the insights of the thermodynamic theory and the related theories of deterministic chaos. So we can see that for, for the first uh, first reading, for example, for some, some student of linguistics, this could be qu quite a hard, hard thing, uh, all these terms, all, all these theories. But it was the speciality of Professor Korzelinski, and uh, especially from these reasons, we, we loved him uh, because he was so inspiring. Uh, but why Professor Korzelinski thought that he can use dynamical systems for modeling uh, language or speech or communication. So here's the answer from his maybe most known paper, where the tide turns or not anti Bogrand. It's a quite pretty translation. In Czech, it's Kamsevil na obrací, anep nikoli anti Bogrand. But I think the deeper 
did it quite good, uh, you can say <laughs> when you think about it. But uh, uh, Professor Kozinski says, for human verbal communication in the unity of subjective and intersubjective assumptions to it is undoubtedly just such a complex systemic phenomenon, unless we accept anti-rational interpretations of things as our idea. So it's it's something like that, a dilemma. We can use some kind of postmodernism, poststructuralism, and to build something like anti -rational, uh, rational interpretations of speech, of verbal communication, or we can use this uh, systemic view, uh, this uh, conceive speech and communication as complex systemic phenomenon and model it or try to uh, construct some model of it through this uh, system, uh, uh, dynamic systems theory. And uh, the second quotation from the another paper is uh, uh, more concrete, and uh, it uses the, 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 the terminology from the, from the dynamic systems. So uh, again, I, I will read it. Thus, as expressive and communicative needs make the system of assumptions of speech activity non-equilibrium broken in terms of its symmetrical allegiance, and in this sense, susceptible to changes recovering the original principle of structuring. However, the restoration of the original structuring is never a simple restitution, but always a qualitatively new functional structural state, which while preserving the original functional structural symmetrical and asymmetrical qualities is a new element of the dynamical process of speech activity. Again, quite a uh, very hard uh, part of text, spe specifically written by Professor Kozinski. We can see there uh, this conceptual borrowing from system theory, uh, the concept of symmetry of, of space, the symmetry of structure. Uh, the broken symmetry is not something like uh, something uh, randomly chosen as a term, but it's a special, special term from, from dynamic systems theory, used especially in physics. And what's uh, the most important for me is, is the combination of functional and structural explanation in this context, because uh, when we are thinking about, about functional and structural explanations, um, but this is my, my point of view from the position of philosophy of science, maybe in linguistics is, is a special and other case, uh, then this, this, this uh, the models of explanations are quite different. But uh, for Professor Kozinski, it was possible to combine it. At, and I think it's not, again, any, any random thing, but a quite important thing, this functional structural state, like something uh, which is, according to me, missing in, in the case of uh, synergetic linguistics and system theoretical linguistics, where there is only the functional view and the structural view is uh, is somehow missing. Fine, so this is for some, uh, some quotations from Professor Kozinski's writing and uh, a motivation to study his work, I think very fundamental and, and important. And now uh, one simple hypothesis of Professor Kozinski. Uh, again, I choose this hypothesis because of, of, of my uh, profilation as a philosopher, I cannot take some, some deep uh, hypothesis concerning grammar or, or, or linguistic system. So in this, my uh, most favorite paper from the 90s, uh, Professor Kozinski writes, interpretation in the sense of order in the course of real historical time absorbs spaces for chaos, which thus hypothetically applies to the use of the terms order and chaos, which was defined, identified above as opposition. So uh, I think that it's nothing which you say it's 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 wonderful hypothesis. It's, you, you can say it's something general, very general. We have some kind of opposition. Uh, okay, maybe it's uh, we can say it's a little bit weak, uh, something uh, not too much specific, but. If we uh, understand that the opposition between chaos and order or noise and order was something which changed in, in thinking of Professor Kozinski influenced by its dynamical systems theory, then this is really a very important question because it's the question if, if the way we conceive the, the chaos as something which has to be absorbed by, by order in, in scientific thinking, if it really in the historical perspective is uh, 
decreasing and lighting the place for the for the new kind of order. Uh, the difference between order and uh, disorder, or in this case, order and noise, is important because from the point of view of these dynamical systems theory, uh, the chaos is a term, or we can in, in Czech we say deterministic chaos, but in, 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 in case of English it's, it's quite, uh, I think, strange to use this term deterministic chaos, because chaos as a term is something which has some kind of determinism in it. Uh, so it's a new kind of order. You can say that uh, this is a kind of order which do not, uh, yeah, where we cannot find some kind of direct predictability or strict predictability, but still some kind of qualitative predictability or some kind of qualitative explanation, but still explanation which is tightly connected to the mathematic description, not uh, in any case of uh, to conceive qualitative as, as, as a kind of interpretation. So uh, this is the hypothesis. There is some complication from the first uh, quotation on this on this slide. You can see that, uh, and I will not read it now. You can read it. That Professor Koshensky is afraid that we cannot use this new tool about this new kind of chaos as a new kind of order. Uh, in a, in, kind, in a kind of general variant for all sciences or for, for all disciplines, that we can accommodate it for different disciplines, different uh, variants of disciplines, different for social sciences, maybe for humanities and for linguistics. So this general answer for the hypothesis probably will be negative. But uh, immediately he has this very nice application. Again, this is the style of Professor Koshensky writing. So he liked terms like uh, nereductivní monizování in Czech. Uh, in English, it's non-reductive monizing, probably, but it's, it's derived from non-reductive monism, which is some kind of, of, of concept in, in philosophy. And uh, he is using it uh, exactly to, to uh, eliminate this opposition between lang and paro. So... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so this quotation I will read because I like it. <clears throat> uh, not only does the communicant instrumentally produce the parole by means of the lung, but at the same time, at every moment of speech, the parole produces the lung and thus vicariously the communicant. Uh, this is uh, one sentence which combines uh, combines dynamical systems theory with with uh, the deep uh, insight of uh, structuralism. So we can we can negate the, the, the distinction between lung and parole when we say that the parole is able to generate lung, like like using the term of the deterministic chaos. So so in the parole we have this deterministic chaos which is able to produce the order of lung. Uh, I don't know if it's a, a, a nice metaphor or if we can go uh, full tip with this and uh, develop it in in something new. But precisely this sentence this was uh, where where uh, the places where I was uh, excited when I when I read uh, first time Professor Kozinski's work in uh, uh, some 20, 22, 23 years ago. Uh, <clears throat> so for the for the uh, hypothesis, there are some constraints. Um, when we are thinking about science, so we are thinking mainly about three different things about its ontology, methodology, axiology. Here we can probably use it only for the methodological point uh, of view or for the for the methodological dimension. But uh, in in Professor Kozinski's writing, there there was also the reflection of of ontology and axiology of science. So, uh, but it's true that for these papers which are selected, the the methodological perspective was the, the most important. And uh, when we would like to somehow corroborate the hypothesis, then it's uh, again true uh, for the second constraint that we can uh, corroborate it only uh, or mainly for the natural sciences. Uh, these parallel philosophical reflections, uh, I will let for your, uh, for your um, maybe some, some meditation in, in the future, I will not comment it, but there was a huge philosophical debate about, about uh, dynamical systems. Uh, and uh, is it true that from the beginning, beginning, well, for example, James Gleick said that chaos theory is a, is a new kind of science, a parad paradigm change, 
there was something like more conservative end of this debate. So in the end, in, in some 20 years, uh, in uh, Stephen Kellard's writing, there was something like consensus that deterministic chaos is, is a continuation of, of uh, dynamical systems, that this is uh, not something like a rupture with Newtonian science, and uh, that the application of, of dynamical systems in, uh, in the case of humanities is not so easy as it was conceived. Uh, in 80s or 90s. So for the hypothesis, I think we can say that uh, uh, the Koshensky hypothesis about, about the grow of the space for order in the new form of the deterministic chaos, uh, that it was corroborated for, for natural sciences. Uh, because plenty of, uh, of different uh, uh, anomalies in, uh, in physics, in chemistry, in 20th century or in the second uh, half of the 20th century were eliminated or were absorbed by our dynamical systems, turbulence, uh, weather for forecasting, and and other other phenomena uh, were were explained by it. It was it was something like really new uh, new invention and uh, expansion accumulation of knowledge. So nothing like like rupture or paradigm change, and. Uh, this continuity of knowledge uh, was was uh, highlighted precisely by by Peter uh, Peter Smith, who, who, whom I I uh, I skipped, so I I make an ex, uh, excuse and and say about him now. Uh, but for the case of humanities, it seems to me that uh, the hypothesis is rather unconfirmed. And uh, that we can say maybe that uh, uh, the development, the development of, of humanities could uh, support uh, quite opposite hypothesis, that uh, the development of the humanities rather give a room for, for uh, methodological chaos, like, like uh, fair Rabindian chaos, where uh, in a situation at the turn of, of millennium, as, as Professor Kozinski said, uh, we have uh, plenty of different post disciplines, cross disciplines, interdisciplines. We have uh, we have disciplines which are based on on some kind of community, only institutionally, something like maybe a, a kind of fashion for some time, and uh, uh, these modes of methods of argumentation are quite different. One is uh, one uh, discipline from uh, another. And uh, uh, something like methodological anarchism is is present uh, in in the case of of humanities, and anything goes. Uh, and uh, Professor Kozinski was very uh, yes, he, he was really very good uh, man. So when someone, for example, I remember in nineties, uh, oh no, it was not nineties, it was maybe two thousand or two thousand one. Uh, he was a supervisor of of, of one a diploma thesis. Uh, which combined uh, Ilya Prigozhin, thermodynamics, dynamical systems, uh, Derrida, uh, Kristeva, and, and plenty of other things. It was like, now I can say, a, a new kind of Deleuze or uh, Gattari. Uh, nice reading, but very, very interesting. Professor Koshensky said, this is the right case of deconstruction. It is better than, than uh, what Derrida was able to write. And uh, but I know from his methodological writing and from his papers that he was against this refutation of the hypothesis in the case of humanities. Now, precisely, he says this. I think that this is some something like uh, some impetus or some kind of instruction for humanities. Uh, and uh, so he, he in in the in the paper, which title is the same as the title of the whole collected book. An extremely important methodological stimulation appears to be the stimulus from theoretical physics and physical chemistry with explicit self-critical methodological reflection, which in my judgment culminated in Prigogenian skepticism. Physics and the natural sciences in general in their self-critical methodological move towards deterministic chaos theories as a result of their critique of Newtonian axioms, I believe address many of the criticism of non-rational postmodernism on the ground of rationalism and thus represent a promising starting point for a new type of rationality. New type of rationality. It was 
something again special for uh, for the time of the yes turn of the millennia and uh, and in philosophy to think about a new kind of rationality but i do not think about it uh, in in the connect the connection with for example a postmodern intellectuals, but I think that for Professor Kozensky, this is uh, uh, precisely the this impetus for for the change of thinking about humanities. And when we are thinking about our department, uh, I think uh, that uh, Professor Kozensky did quite a good um, job because uh, he cultivated uh, in us these germs of this new type of rationality. Uh, we are a very interdisciplinary department with different researchers, semiotic, quantitative, philosophical, and so on, biosemiotic. And uh, we are open to praxis. Uh, we have the sympathy with language data analysis. We developed digital humanities where we think that we can strictly realize some kind of new theoretical basis for humanities. So I think that we can say thank you, Professor Kozinski, and I thank you for your attention. Great, thank you, thank you. So, uh, do we have questions here from the audience? Uh, or questions here in Zoom? I need to think about them. <laughs> but please, good morning. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much to both of our presenters uh, today in the Semya Salon. And I really appreciate the choice of uh, Lukash's topic because it relates to Eric. Eric presented the notion of value as a dynamical, uh, which is uh, contradictory to the original Saussurian definition, right, as synchronical. Uh, but Eric presented this innovative uh, notion of value as something uh, which is uh, mutating uh, and it's dynamic and it's uh, related to Professor Koshensky's theory uh, where he developed the dynamical systems theory, especially of course, when we uh, talk about language. So uh, I am very grateful for the choice of the topics. And also uh, I wanted to thank the Lukash because he did a, a great a job for, for everyone in uh, translating Professor Koshensky's papers. <laughs> well. Uh, anyway, so I just wanted to uh, thank you very much and uh, also for the innovative uh, approach and interdisciplinary. So uh, we can see that Professor Koshensky not only uh, did uh, an immense uh, work for linguistics, for Czech linguistics and general linguistics, but also for uh, philosophy and all the interdisciplinary uh, studies uh, which are so popular nowadays. So thank you very much. And uh, I think we have a question from Josh in at the Tartu Semiotics Department. Uh, can you guys hear me? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, good guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for the talk. Uh, yeah, it's definitely I'm I'm pleased to be introduced to uh, Korsinski. Um, Korsinski. Korzhensky, <laughs> the linguist in the crowd are helping me. Um, Korzhensky, um, I'm intrigued uh, with the, the emphasis on on deterministic chaos because, uh, uh, in in my understanding, deterministic chaos is essentially a, a, a it it um, it's a model. It's a it's an, a modeling approach. Um, and that's not necessarily how uh, 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 natural systems, uh, let alone living systems, um, are operating. I mean, they could still operate in the way that I may maybe Korzynski is saying, but I'm just curious, like, for example, just as a very sim simple example, you can, you can model uh, the weather deterministically. Uh, on a computer, like, uh, um, but uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that all the nonlinearity. Um, well, I, let me put it a different way: that that the that the highly nonlinear. I'd even go so far as to say diachronic um, uh, interactions um, 
are rendering actual weather um, indeterministic, in other words, non-tractable. Um, and that that would be more commensurate with time irreversible uh, semiosis. Um, and so I'm, I'm intrigued with it. So based off, off that, would you say that Korzynski would agree that semiosis is time irreversible um, and if so, then does it have to be, you know, is the focus on deterministic chaos so important? And if it is important, is it deterministic merely in, in the sense of um, uh, a modeling approach as I understand deterministic chaos uh, to be? Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, I think it's 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 really relate, related to to the popularity of deterministic chaos in in nineties in in in, in Czech, uh, Czech Republic, or it it was popularized and it it was uh, it was tractated in plenty of fora. So so Professor Kozenski used it like like an example, but uh, I think he was he was a, an instrumentalist. I think he do not think about about uh, these these concepts more than like models so so for him it was not problem that this is only a mo modeling technique uh and the same he could say about about thermodynamics and about this uh so this is the one thing and the, the other other thing is quite different uh, and this is the reason why i choose I choose the the quotation from calvino uh it was a kind of game uh, it was a kind of game with terms i think in the case of professor kozenski and it, it was a, a happy game with with, with concepts and uh, what, what, what he can express with them so uh i think we, we i'm not able to answer the question if if he thought about semiosis as a irreversible process maybe Ludmila knows <laughs> he knows his semiotics better than me <laughs> Um, but I'm not able to answer this. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Anna, please. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you for the presentation. And I'm just curious, like, uh, why did you use the term noise as the oppose of uh, the order? Like, does this noise then represent chaos, but what, uh, chaos or disorder? Like, why was that term specifically used? Mm -hmm. thank, thank you for the question. Uh, this is a terminological thing. and. Uh, Maybe it's wrong, but uh, uh, in 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 at least in Czech uh, uh, mathematical community, uh, who is interested with nonlinear systems and dynamics, uh, and according to my information from from a, one of these mathematicians, the term noise is used as an opposition to chaos when we are thinking about it technically. So chaos is a deterministic and. Uh, noise is a st statistic or stochastic phenomenon. Uh, but I'm not sure if this is still true uh, after 15 years of, of, uh, of development of dynamical systems, but but this is my information from, from Professor Jan Andres, who said me that noise and chaos are two different different terms in, in the case of dynamical systems. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so do we have more questions here from the audience uh, or in Zoom? Uh, more yes. Or... Yes, if, please. If you mind. <laughs> Hi. Um, it's just because I'm a bit curious about the use of the term natural science and a lot of reference to physics, but apparently, but maybe it's just the presentation about that, no reference to biology. And if there is a natural science with a constant mix between chaos and order, it's biology. So is there a notion about that in the text or is it a notion that is absent? Is it an issue of the translation? Is the, the choice of natural science as a translation? Yeah, I was just curious about the presence or not of uh, this aspect. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. It's a nice question. I think uh, Professor Kozinski uh, is, is is not using biological examples. Maybe I don't know why, but but he is using strictly physics, mathematics, chemistry, uh, but not biology. But uh, maybe it, it's it's a, it's again uh, the the time specific because all these theories about synergetics, about uh, thermodynamics, nonlinear and thermodynamics. We're trying to explain biological phenomena 
through physics and chemistry. So maybe Professor Kozensky believed in this, that biology could be explained by, by nonlinear systems and, and, uh, and chemistry. And so, uh, but of course, uh, fr from the point of view of, of biosemiotics, it's, it's, it's a nonsense. And probably also from the point of view of contemporary biology or code biology, it's a nonsense. Uh, but it was it was a time specific uh, mm, yes for for the for the Czech audience uh, this this popularity of of chaos synergetics and and so thank you thank you, thank you. Uh, do we have more questions or comments or insights. Uh, no, I, I, I can only uh, expect for the translations <laughs> because it really it, it sounds great. And yeah, we are already uh, very much in love with Koryensky's work from reading his uh, grammar on a constructing grammar uh, yeah. on a semantic basis. So yeah, we, we, we are really hoping for <laughs> upcoming uh, translations into English. And um, but OK, so if uh, we don't have any more questions, uh, we can uh, uh, finish the session now. And I would only remind you that um, we are having the salon on Wednesdays and uh, we will be on Zoom, of course. Uh, and for you, we will be right across the yard at the inter... Uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the street. So <laughs> and not, it's not even right across the yard. It's just uh, downstairs. We will be downstairs at, at the... International Semiotics Institute. Uh, uh, you can come uh, on Wednesdays evenings. Um, I'm sorry, I got a bit lost. Yes, so in two weeks, uh, we will have uh, Professor Daniele Monticelli from Tallinn University. And uh, we will have also, uh, I think, uh, yeah, we, we will have Jean, who is uh, here with us. Uh, and um, yeah, it will be also very, very nice. Uh, there will be more talk about Lotman on the side of uh, Monticelli, uh, maybe a little bit on the side of uh, Jean. Um, yeah, which it's also a very nice link because Lotman was also very much interested in, in uh, Prigogin and uh, chaos. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, well, uh, come in, in two weeks. Uh, so when, yeah. Next, not next Wednesday, but the one right uh, after that one. And uh, yeah, we will start at a different time. So I'm, I'm sorry if it's a bit confusing, but we, we, sh we should start at six uh, for, for, uh, for the next uh, session. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much for coming here. And thank you very much for being online. And uh, yeah, we hope you enjoy yourselves. Uh, those with the uh, those of you with the camera open seem to be having a lot of fun so it's great <laughs> and yeah thank, thanks a lot to you i think we still have some snacks so please feel free to uh, eat them and yeah thank you <laughs>